<laughs> the monster Bachira Meguro versus the Red Panther Chigiri Hyoma. Two incredible strikers that are the current stars of their respective teams, but also two of the original Egoist 4 of Team Z. So how would these two fan favorites fare against one another? And who is the better striker in the speed versus dribbling matchup? Well, in today's video we are going to look at their stats, abilities and analyze their best feats to determine who comes on top. But before we do however, if you enjoy this type of videos, please consider subscribing and joining my community discord server for more amazing blue lock theories and reviews. And now without any further ado, on with the video. Bachira Meguru, the unlimited dribbler of blue lock, a very light hearted player, easy going and very friendly, and almost seems too reliant on others. On the pitch however, Bachira is the true definition of freedom goes only for plays that excite his heart and push his imagination boundaries. Whether be it with his dribbles or passes, he only lives for the new horizons he can uncover. As per usual, we are going to start with his stats. And honestly, Bachira boasts an average stat line all around. Definitely not low, but not great either. Physically speaking, Bachira is just like Isigi, maybe a bit better, an average Joe. First, let's look at his strength, muscle mass and draw power which is probably his weakest stat, as Bachira is a skinny and a weak player physically speaking. And in the same vein, his jumping ability is pretty laughable, with very low numbers and no feats to speak of, as Bachira is the king of the grounds and not the heights. Next, for his endurance, Bachira has an above average numbers, which is essential to help him in keeping the tenacity of the dribbles high. And finally, let's talk about his speed, which is probably his best stat, and I want to emphasize that it's not amazing, just above average. But this speed helps Bachira in cutting the corner faster to lose the players he be dribbling. To me, Bachira's stats are at the functional level. They are not the best by any means, but good enough for his playing style. And on the topic of his playing style, it's time for us to explore his best weapons and abilities. Before we speak about Bachira's strongest weapon that is at the core of his playing style, which is his dribbling, I want to note that he is a special player where his whole existence is focused around his dribbling, with the only other remarkable ability being his passes, which helps him in situations when he gets surrounded and cornered. But in any case, let's dig in. In what we call the monster dribbling, Bachira unleashes his imagination to the fullest, and visualizes different dribbling patterns all at once and each time the patterns are different depending on the player and on the situation. But what I found to be really interesting about Bachira's dribbling is the way he built it. From the humble beginnings of the first selection where he was first trying out his creativity randomly to him learning to lash out with all of his imagination and play only to what ignites his heart and creativity further which was where he really took his dribbling to the next level However, when he faced Pablo in the World 5 game, he told him that he lacks variety, not in his movements, but rather in his rhythms. Now, I want to mention that Bajra at this point was still insane, it's just that he was up against a world-class player, as in the U20 game, he was able to throw off the whole enemy defense, one after another, in an insane sequence, to the point where even Aiko's analytical eye got completely shocked by the level of unorthodoxy he was witnessing, as he was getting completely destroyed. In this game, however, three players had better dribbling, the Itoshi brothers, Sai and Rin in his berserker form, and the one-on-one -on -one Emperor Yuki. While Bachura's dribbling was still the deadliest once executed, he lacked consistency and rhythm variety. Where for example, Sai and Yuki both of them evolved, and funny enough, they both did it in response to Baro throwing the whole game into chaos. But anyways, this lack of consistency and rhythm variety is where Lavinio comes into play. Not only did the FC Barca master take Bachira's imagination to a whole new level in the NEL, he also introduced for him a new evolution path for his dribbling, the Jenga, which is a Brazilian technique where the upper body moves freely, while your feet treat the ball as an extension of the body. To explain just how broken this is, the upper body is usually what reveals to the defender the direction of your dribble. But with the Jenga, this rule gets thrown off as the upper body is detached from your rhythm. This gave birth to the unlimited monster Pachira, who now reigns on the throne of Blue Lock as the best dribbler, and falls short in the U20 category to maybe Sai. This honestly is such an insane feat, to be rivaling the best new gen 11 dribblers and even be on the conversation to beat them. This makes Bajira one of the deadliest strikers in the U20 category right now. But can he beat the speedster Chigiri? The Red Panther of Blue Lock, Chigiri Hyoma. 
One of the coolest characters in the series, handsome, elegant and actually one of the few who has a normal healthy personality. And like the crazies that exist in Blue Lock. Well, that's outside the field. On the pitch, however, Chigiri has one of the biggest egos that pushes him to strive for nothing but to be the absolute best in the world. But if anything is to be said about Chigiri, it has to do with one of his specs that is off the charts. So on that topic, let's explore his physical stats. I'm not going to waste nobody's time here and start straight up with his signature stat, his speed. There is no conversation to be had here. Chigiri has the highest speed stat in the U20 category even beating the new gen 11, with the fastest of them Kaiser being far behind. The only U20 player close to Chigiri speed wise is Zantetsu, and even then Zantetsu only beats Chigiri in acceleration, yet in top speed he falls behind badly to the Red Panther. Now everyone knows how great Chigiri speed is, but I'm not sure you guys quite understand how broken it really is, as even among the pros that we have seen thus far, I doubt they can beat him speed wise, with a few exceptions obviously, which are Loki, Prince, Noah, and probably Snuffy, since his friend Mike was a speedster as well, but we don't know for sure with the master strategist, as his meta vision and IQ could be the reason he kept up with Mike, but I digress. The fact of the matter remains, Chigiri beats even some of the pros, which is an insane of a feat honestly, and is something to always keep in mind when speaking about him. For now let's carry on with his other stats and then get back to exploring his speed in great detail. First let's talk endurance as it pretty much goes hand to hand with his speed. It's the silver lining between having bursts of speed or being a flashy flash who dominates the whole game. As for Chigiri, while his body is very adapt to his speed, in the second selection he reached his limit and ran out of gas when the level of the game got really high. But more importantly, in the U20 game, after an amazing performance and even reacting to Sai X Shiro link up, his injured knee gave up, and while it's not straight up endurance, this has a direct effect on his ability to keep the performance up. Well, this was until his training under Chris Prince, where Chigiri really reinforced his muscles with personalized training regime, increasing his endurance exponentially, as well as fortifying his knee muscles and now Chigiri can keep up the insane speed and performance throughout the game, with no issues. In fact, in the last moments of the Bastard game, him and Ryo were everywhere, both on attack and on defense, which for Chigiri is insane, as the defense has to deal with his speed threat all game. Alright, what about his other stats? For his muscle mass, it really isn't great, he is skinny. But I want to mention something. I mentioned this in previous videos, but I love charges that we've seen from Baro and Zantetsu. These actually utilize the momentum you built up to slice through the defense, and where Chigiri's charges were always strong, enough for him to battle even the best of opponents like Baro. And sure it was basically his speed that enabled this, but his muscle mass is strong enough to hold off, even for a few seconds. But after training under Prince, this stat went even higher. And finally for his jumping ability, the stat that remains his weakest, with no feats to speak of, as it doesn't really fit with his playing style. But with this we are done with his stats and now it's time for his weapons and abilities. And this is where I'm going to talk about Chigiri's speed as an ability rather than a stat, as basically the way he has been improving it goes beyond the basic stat enhancing training. Rather, Chigiri has been introducing new techniques and evolution paths to his speed to make it the formidable weapon that it is. The first technique he added was in the second selection. After realizing the choke point of his speed, which is when he traps the ball, Chigiri began kicking the ball forward, then catching up to it faster than anyone, rather than decelerating, trap the ball and then re-accelerating again. And while it seems small, this technique fits perfectly, as without giving any intervals, Chigiri becomes a very deadly jet engine, and a reliable option that is always open. Next are his sharp and quick cuts and turns that he learned under Prince, taking a page from Baro and Zantetsu again and pushing it to the limit. Chigiri now utilizes his speed in a new manner by zigzagging around his opponents with his new and much improved acceleration, which helps him in dealing with players cutting his courses. And funny enough, this training has a double effect, as due to his cuts being super fast, Chigiri now has one of the deadliest dribbling abilities in the U20 category, while other dribblers either utilize techniques to throw the defender's time and balance, or react to the opponent's movement and bypass them with fast dribbles. Chigiri's dribbling is much much simpler, he just cuts through with brute unadulterated speed, 
In the Bastard game, we saw how BM used all three of its speedsters together just to stop the Red Panther, further cementing his deadliness. And finally, let's talk about his Golden Zone, which is the ability not born directly out of his speed. And honestly, it's a testament to the brilliance of Chris Prince. I know a lot of fans clown him, but honestly, no one understood the bodies of his players like Prince did. So we know how before, due to his speed, Chigiri always finds himself in the corners crossing for Isigi and the others. Well, Prince utilized that crossing muscle memory he built up and turned it into an insane shot at a 44 degree from the left, the opposite direction of where Chigiri used to play. This shot, while being a very conditional one, with his insane speed and dribbles, Chigiri can very easily reach his golden zone, resulting in a very reproducible golden formula for goals, making Chigiri the complete package for a striker, with weapons and techniques honed specifically for scoring, whether alone or when receiving passes, a very deadly threat if I say so myself. But can he beat the monster Bachira? Bachira vs Chigiri is one of the low-key insane rivalries. Both are players who knew what they can do from the start, and both are deadly strikers when left unchecked. But more importantly, both are the best at what they do, so you could say this is speed versus dribbling. So how would these two fare when going against one another? Now since Chigiri blurs the line between abilities and stats, it is pretty mundane to speak about their stat battle. Instead, we are going to jump straight up to a real matchup in a real game. In their NEL games, both players went back to defense multiple times and targeted either Kaiser or Isegi, the most dangerous players. And so even though they are strikers, both of them will target each other trying to stop one another. Obviously, Chigiri will be the first offender due to his speed. And so can he really stop Bachira? Well, the answer is twofold. First, let's talk head-on, and here I believe Chigiri has zero chance of stopping Bachira. We have seen in the Bastard vs. Manshine game how a simple dribble by Isigi was enough to throw Chigiri off, and Isigi is a fly compared to Bachira when it comes to dribbling. Now I thought maybe with his speed and reaction time Chigiri can understand Bachira's rhythm and stop him, but with Jenga it's highly unlikely. But even worse for Chigiri, Bachira's new monster dribbling isn't only proactive like he used to be, but much like Sai, it is reactive as well. And here, Chigiri's speed would become a double-edged sword. Bachira can easily throw him off hardly. If Isigi can utilize Chigiri's speed against him this effectively, Bachira can do it in so many ways, easily and routinely. As I stated, head-on, his chances are close to none. But we have seen from Chigiri another type of defense that fully utilize his speed. That is him cutting passes all of a sudden. Due to his speed, Chigiri can lurk far away from Bachira's field of vision and intercept passes coming his way. We have seen how this worked against a lot of players, even Kaiser himself, a player with meta vision, and would take Bachira by surprise more than a few times, stopping him before he gets the chance to play his best cards, kind of like how Isigi was choking Baro until he rebelled. Alright, but what about Bachira stopping Chigiri? With not so great off the ball movement, Bachira has no option but to charge Chigiri head on. And here, <laughs> Chigiri will literally take him on a right. Much like Nagi got infuriated by his speed, so will Bachira. And with no great physicality or enough speed, Bachira will only catch Chigiri's dust. Even if he cuts his course, we have seen multiple times how not a single player was able to hold Chigiri's zigzags. Even Yuki with his insane speed got thrown off and needed Kaiser's help. But not to stop Chigiri fully, but just to stop his shot. Speaking of Kaiser, when he faced both players, he treated Hiyoma as a far more threatening striker and actually called Bachira on defense a fly. And while obviously Kaiser's word is not law, his assessments are usually right. Now, with no chance at stopping each other head on, it will be a battle of spears and no shields. However, Chigiri has the ability to take Bachira by surprise and cut him off. I would say Chigiri would have better time dealing with Bachira than the other way around, as Bachira seriously has no answer to Chigiri. But before we finalize the winner, it was brought to my attention by one of you guys that I need to consider that Blue Lock is all about ego and that it plays a big role in the threat level of a player. As such, I should include it in my assessments, which I honestly thought was a great idea. So, how would their egos fare when clashing? Well, for starter, Bachira is a very egotistical character. He is always looking for plays that are fulfilling to his imagination and creativity. On the other hand, however, Chigiri aims for nothing but to be the best. The absolute best. And thus, in a battle of egos and motivations, Chigiri also stomps. And as such, he is the winner of our matchup and is the better overall player right now. 
And you might be wondering, if Chigiri is superior, why does Bachira has a better NEL ranking? Well, that's because he is basically carrying Barcha, while Chigiri has to coexist in a system that has Nagi at its center. Even still, Chigiri is outperforming Nagi and I won't be surprised if he would become Manshine's new star. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed and until next time, thank you for watching.